channel. So today I'm going to be talking about our birth story. So Javi's not here, he's sleeping right now because he works third shift. So I'm going to be telling my story alone. It's my story anyways because I'm the one who gave birth. Um, I wrote it down all on my phone, like what I could remember because it's been over a month already. So let's see. Okay, first off, my last appointment with my doctor was on my 38-week appointment. So I think I was like 38 weeks and three days or something like that. And I was not dilated at all. And she asked me if I wanted to schedule an induction for 39 weeks. So I said yes. And my induction schedule date was May 21st. We were supposed to go in at 7 o'clock in the night and that's when I was going to get induced but the night before on Monday night at 11 30 my water broke so the baby was like you're not gonna induce I'm just coming so I thought my water broke but I wasn't sure um, it was kind of like just a little bit of water because it didn't go through to my pants and it wasn't like a huge gush or anything like that like how in the movies it is so I was like maybe you know it's not my water I don't know and then I changed went back to like bed for like 30 minutes and then woke up again well I never really went to bed I just like laid down um, and then I got up again and went to the bathroom to check and there was fluid again so I was like okay this has to be my water because I know I'm not peeing myself um and I was like do I go to the hospital do I call my doctor I don't know I have my scheduled induction at that time it was tomorrow the next day so I was like should I wait till then I have no idea so I just decided to call my doctor it was at that time 12:30. So my water, I first noticed that it was like leaking or whatever at 11.30 and then I waited the 30 minutes till 12, checked it was still fluid there, waited another 30 minutes, checked there was fluid there again, so then I called my doctor at 12.30. When I called her, I told her that I think my water was breaking, so she was like, oh, got a labor and delivery. I was like, okay. Um, so I took my time. I like took a shower, got ready, woke up Javi because he was sleeping, and then he took a shower and got ready, and then we grabbed all our bags because everything was already in the bag and the car seat was already in the car, so we just had to grab all our stuff and put it in the car. Um, so we did that, and then we got to the hospital at like 1.55 a.m., so I had gotten no sleep that night. like. At all. I didn't go to sleep. And that was May 20th, Monday. So no sleep Monday night. Then we get to the hospital. I go in through the emergency room and they're like, oh, are you this doctor's um, patient? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, oh, your doctor called and they already have a room for you. Everything's ready. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. So everything was ready for me and I just went right in. Um, and they did like my vitals and stuff, you know. And they put me in the um, room that I would deliver in. And they were like, oh, we're just gonna make sure that it's your water that broke. Cause I guess they have like a strip test or whatever that checks if the fluid is your water breaking or if it's something else, I don't know. So they tested me to see if it was my water. They came back and they were like, yep, it was your water it broke so you're gonna stay here so I was like okay um like am I dilated now or what so they checked me again <sighs> guys I was one centimeter one just one and at this point I was 39 weeks and one day sorry there was a fly there um 39 weeks and one day and I was still one centimeter dilated. That's it. So the nurse comes in and she's like, oh, your doctor said that we are going to put you on Pitocin to start, like, things 
getting faster, you know, and to start things up. Maybe that'll help me get dilated. So they started me on Pitocin. Let me tell you, <laughs> Pitocin does not work. I never want Pitocin again. Just so you know, if they ask you if you want Pitocin and they give you the option, don't get Pitocin. Okay? That's all I'm saying. So, we, I would say we got checked in around like 2 o'clock because we got there at 1.55. And then from 2 a.m. to about 9.15 a.m., I had only progressed half a centimeter. Half, not even a full centimeter. It was great. And if you guys don't know, Pitocin makes your contractions feel much stronger and they hurt a lot more. So, even though it was only one centimeter and then it went to one and a half centimeters, it was very painful, very painful, okay? So, I like was not dilating at all. I was just one and a half centimeters. And then, so 9.15, I progressed the half centimeter. 12.45, two centimeters. Guys, I'm not lying. <laughs> I was not progressing at all and I was getting so mad because every time they were like, okay, we're gonna check you, I'd be like, okay, maybe I'm like further along, like three, four centimeters, no, two centimeters, okay? And to top it all off, this entire day, me and Javi were both sick. Like, we had the cold, I was sniffling, I was coughing, Javi just like, was so bad I don't know why but he gets like really really sick when he's sick I'm not as bad but he was super sick so he was like on NyQuil all day so he was sleeping the whole time the whole time I don't blame him because I know he was sick and I was really sick too um, and I just couldn't sleep because of the contractions obviously or else I would have slept but he was sleeping he was getting rest for when I was actually delivering so that he could be up um, so my mom was like with me the whole time I was going through contractions um, and then so from like 1245 all the way that afternoon uh, oh baby's crying sorry guys I had to go get this little one he started crying you want to look at the camera you want to look at the camera you tired still he was sleeping and he just woke up Look at the camera. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think he likes the camera. What the matter? What the matter? <laughs> okay, he's hungry. Okay, so like I said, by 5.30, I was at 5 centimeters finally, but I still had a long way to go. I still had to get to 10. So, at this point, they were already really painful, and um, I still knew I didn't want to get the epidural, um, but one of the nurses, she saw how much pain I was in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for you. So she saw how much pain I was in and she knew I didn't want an epidural and she was on like the same page as me. She was like, you don't need it. Um, but she was like, there are some pain like medications that we can put in your IV to make it a little bit less painful. She's like, it'll only work for like an hour or two, um, but it'll at least, what? She's like, it'll at least um, take away the pain for a little bit so that your body isn't as tense and hopefully you progress more. So I was like, okay, it's not the epidural. I did want to go all natural, um, but a little bit of pain medication won't hurt. And it was really painful at this time too. So I was like, you know what? I'm getting the pain medicine. <laughs> He's just over here stretching away. <laughs> um, so around like 6.50 is when I got the pain medication. Um, and she had said that you could only get it before your eight centimeters, I think she said, um, 
or six centimeters, something like that. It was either six or eight. Um, so I had got it then at 650 and then it like knocked me out. It like made me feel like I was drunk basically. And I felt like really woozy and out of it. So as soon as I felt like that, I told Javi, I don't want the epidural. Don't let them give it to me because I'm feeling really woozy and I don't want to say yes to something I don't want while I'm feeling like this. So remember, I don't want it. Then I knocked out. Like I was just out. Um, and when I woke back up, I woke up to a contraction because I felt them again. The medicine had wore off by this time. I was asleep for like an hour or two. Um, and so I woke up to a really painful contraction and I like felt them again. And they were just coming and coming and it was feeling really bad. And then finally at 11.30, okay, so 6.50 I got to pay meds. 11.30, I got to 8 centimeters. Finally, I was getting somewhere. I remember when um, they told me I was 8 centimeters, I literally was like, finally, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> because all day, it was taking forever to progress. So I was just getting really discouraged and like disheartened and I was like, maybe I might have to get a C-section, you know? And um, maybe they would have to like interfere more than just the Pitocin because I wasn't progressing. So finally when I got to eight, <laughs> yeah. Finally when I got to eight, I was like, okay, I'm getting somewhere, right? And from eight, it just all, it kept coming. Like it was super painful. That's when like, I think the first thought in my head popped up where I was like, oh my God, I might need the epidural. But when you're eight, you can't get it anymore. Like they don't allow that. So it just like ran through my head like for a split second where I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And so at this time too is when um, the doctors were like, oh, we're gonna check you before they told me I was eight. Who do you want in the room? And at this time I had a lot of family in there. Yeah. <laughs> at this time I had a lot of family in there. And <laughs> I was like, I just want my mom and Javi in here. That's it. Everybody else I want out. Like, I don't want anybody in here anymore. And then that's when they checked me and said I was eight centimeters. And I was, it was super painful. They tried putting like the peanut ball in between my legs and I was like on my side. And that hurt so badly. She was like, it's going to open up your cervix if you do this. But it hurt so bad, like I couldn't take the pain. It was worse than the contractions, literally. It was giving me a pain, like I can't even explain. And I was telling her, like, I can't have it like this. Like, I can't. Sorry, he got hungry again, and I have to start feeding him again. So I'm just going to finish this video while he's breastfeeding. That way, um, he's not crying or, like, making sounds and, like, interrupting some of the video, you know? So, anyways... Um, 1138 centimeters and I kicked everybody out just my mom and hubby were in there and this is when it was the most painful like it started from here on and um, I started progressing really quickly at this point um, so 1138 centimeters then at 1210 it was nine centimeters 1230 nine and a half and then um, right at nine centimeters I remember I told my mom, like, it's time for him to come because I could feel my body pushing him out and I'm not doing anything. Like, I literally had no control over it. My body was just pushing him out. And I was like, he's ready. Like, he's coming right now. The doctor needs to come in. So sure enough, she was like, okay, yeah, you're at 10. And I was like, I was just at nine and a half, but okay. Uh, thank God, because I didn't want to push. And um, they hurried and like, got everything. And she was like, telling me to do practice pushes. And I did like a practice push and she was like, oh no, we can't do it anymore. The baby's coming like right now. Um, and so I did like another push. And then after that one, she was like, okay, we could either wait for the next contraction or we can just push right now because he's almost out. And I was like, I'm getting this baby out. I have been in labor for over a day, like more than 24 hours. So he needs to come out. And um, so I pushed without a contraction, and um, then I think I pushed one more time after, during a contraction, and he was here. 
like it was literally five minutes that I delivered him. I was like, I'm gonna get this baby out now. I cannot have him in here anymore. Um, I was ready for him to be out. So then um, he was born at 12.54 and this was Wednesday, May 22nd. So water broke Monday, May 20th at night. And he was born Wednesday, the 22nd, right when it, like, right after midnight, almost one o'clock. Um, so it was pretty crazy. Um, that was like my whole experience, basically. I wanted to film a lot more for my birth vlog, but right when we got there, they had made us sign a waiver that during the actual, um, like, delivery, that we couldn't take video, we couldn't take photos. Um, and I was really upset because I wanted to videotape it and then also I was going to have a photographer um, come in and take pictures during the delivery and they had said no so I was like okay well why do so many other people do it um, but yeah so that's why I wanted to make this video and like explain it more in detail so on my Instagram I asked if you guys had any questions and I think I'm pretty sure I answered them um, on here. One of them I think was like, did I think at any point I was going to get an epidural? And it like crossed my mind twice maybe, but I knew like I did not want it at all. So I just like got that out of my head. The other question was how does a contraction feel? And basically it's not explainable, but if I could explain it, it's like period cramps on steroids, basically. Like it was super painful, but at the same time, because I didn't want an epidural, I went in there thinking it was gonna be the worst pain of my entire life, which it was. Okay, so he has the hiccups, but I'm gonna try to hurry up and finish his video. Um, okay, so yeah, I thought it was gonna be like really, really painful, obviously, that's what everybody says. Um, but I went in there like preparing for it because I knew I did not want an epidural no matter what. Um, and don't get me wrong, it was really, really painful, like worse. Sometimes I was like, I don't know if I can handle it. But at the same time, looking back at it, I was preparing for a lot worse. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I thought it was gonna be so much worse than it actually was. Um, and I don't know why, like, because it did really hurt, so I don't know why I would say that, but at the same time, I think I just prepared myself for, like, dying, and I wasn't dying, um, but it still hurt really bad, so it took a lot for me not to get the epidural, I just had to keep pushing through it, reminding myself why I didn't want the epidural, um, reminding myself that I was going to be getting this little, this little guy at the end of it, um, and literally, once I pushed him out, like, I didn't even remember the pain at all and the doctor was like so we'll see you next year here again like with another baby and I was like who knows maybe because I still want more after this most people like right after delivery like for a few months are like I do not want to do that again it was so horrible like I never want to go through labor and delivery and they say that for like a while till they go through it again but me, like, I pushed him out and literally not even two minutes after, I was like, I could do this again, I could have another one. <laughs> and everybody thought I was so crazy. But like, it, I don't know, it wasn't that bad to me, even though it was really painful, I'm not gonna lie. Like, guys, don't get me wrong, it was painful. I keep saying like, things that make it seem like it wasn't, but it was. Um, but yeah, I would definitely do it again for another one of these. He's so precious, I love him. Um, but if you guys have any more questions about my labor and delivery or about like not having an epidural, natural birth, like things that I did to like help it or things I would suggest, just let me know, give me a comment or message me, anything like that. Um, but that's pretty much it. I finally got through the whole video um, of my 25 hour labor. And if you did not watch the birth vlog, go watch it. Again, sorry I didn't get a lot of footage, but it was just like crazy day. They told me I couldn't film, so we didn't really have that in our minds anymore since we had signed that. Um, but I did want to get as much as I could, 
So we tried. So thank you for watching and we'll be 